archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent. Link and learn how to torrent fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent. Link and learn how to torrent fiends archives. Are you a programmer? Are you proud of your programming skills? If you can program, then you can prove theorems. And if you can prove theorems, then you can get proof that you can prove theorems at mathgate.info. Are you looking to employ a programmer? Before hiring an applicant, you can verify their skills by asking them to pass a test in basic formal reasoning at mathgate.info. All of this can be done using only Bitcoin addresses as pseudonyms. Welcome to the future. For more information, visit mathgate.info. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Do you need access to money? Do you need cash today? If you are receiving a structured settlement due to a lawsuit or you are receiving pension payments over a long period of time, the Money Settlement Hotline can get you instant funding now. With your cash today, you can pay off credit card debt, pay medical bills, fund your education, or improve your home. You don't need to wait. It's true. If you're receiving a structured settlement or pension payment spread out over time and you want a lump sum amount immediately, then you need to call now. They will turn your long-term structured settlement or pension payments into a lump sum larger cash payout, so you'll get all of your money instantly. If you have a structured settlement or pension and you want cash today, call the Money Settlement Hotline right now. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. That's 888-785-0616. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want. Just dial toll-free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, you can join us online by going to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that are on the site there. Again, freetalklive.com. And don't forget to uh, come on up and see us at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's coming up June 22nd through the 29th. We're literally just over two weeks away from the kickoff of the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Start your list now if you are going and you haven't yet figured out what you need to bring because this is it is camping i mean yeah it's a campground so it's not like it's rustic or anything like that okay but, so it's camping in new hampshire in what is supposed to be the summer yes so make sure you bring a jacket <laughs> and long johns <laughs> and lots and of blankets flip-flops plus things to make a fire and things to wear once you do wind up getting hot in the middle of the day for about an hour and a half right. that's good advice it does get cold at night uh chilly at night 
And this is the northern part of New Hampshire in the White Mountains. And uh, they're called the White Mountains because they're cold up. It's it cold snowed up 10 miles away the week before Pork Fest last really? year. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's hard to prepare for pork fest just because the temperature ranges so much every day. Like when you wake up in the morning, you have to put on three sweaters and then and gradually take them off. As as the day goes on, it gets a little bit warmer. But It can I get mean, pretty warm, actually, and it can also rain. So uh, Especially certainly. if you're walking around outside all day, which most people do. Right, so, so don't miss it. It's a lot of fun, and there are a lot of great liberty-minded people who are going to be there, over 1,500 uh, individuals likely. I mean, last if if last year was any indicator, then there's likely going to be at least 1,500, if not you know 2,000 people who all care about freedom, and many of them are Free State Project participants. They're people who've joined up as the three of us have done and have moved to New Hampshire to get active to achieve liberty. Hopefully, some semblance of it at least in our lifetime. Go to freestateproject.org to learn more about that, and go to porkfest.com, p-o-r-c-f-e-s-t.com. The Porcupine Freedom Festival, June 22nd through the 29th. We will look forward to seeing you there as we go. And we've got more on this DEA story here about the DEA threatening doctors. And Ellen will give us the rest of that. But Lot is on the line first, listening to WIMS in Michigan City. Hello, Lot. Namaste, brothers and sisters. Love Hi. you guys. What's on um, your mind tonight? Thank you. Uh, well, I wanted to talk, you guys are talking about the whole drug war, and uh, you guys made a comment about how the, uh, the possibility of the government working with the cartels. And this, honestly, when you hear something like that, most people probably say, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, that's you know, that, that you're just a conspiracy theorist." But to me, that just seems like it's so crazy that it would be true. And <clears throat> and I think in the in the idea of trying to resolve the corruption in in all systems that we have. I would say that the, the truest way would have to be 100% complete transparency. And I, the reason why that that would be the key to maintaining all of it is, is because with complete transparency, that means that any and everybody can come in, look, and see where everything's going, where it's being dis- distributed. Now, as far as where it goes from there, I, you know, I, I guess that well, was... So, so I want to understand what you're saying company. here uh, real quick, Lot. So when you say total transparency... Do you mean that if the DEA is conducting an investigation, that any individual should be able to pull the investigatory files and look through them? Like, give me some idea of what that means. Okay, I would say, okay, uh, in regard to trans, okay, um, if, okay, monetary-wise, I, I would think monetary-wise would be of a big position and where transparency in a government state would uh, is important to the people because, in regards of where, how, why they're getting so much money, you know, their black books and their, you know, they're all these millions of dollars that they're asking, and they say that it was for national security or it's for this or that. Well, I believe that even though it is for national security, it could still be broken down to, to a point to where you can sort of see that, you know, this is going for, you know, what kind of research, and then here's some sort of, un, you know, declassified So you're just talking about financial, just to be clear. You're just talking about financial transparency, not transparency to the investigations that the police are, are conducting? Like it would be more I, useful to see where the money is going specifically? Right. I would see, because where we have, when we see, you know, we have the 1% and we have the 99%, and we have this big, huge monetary gap, well, if they're receiving money from somewhere, if they're getting money, and I mean, I guess if they were to decide to do it all off the books, I mean, I guess they could. Well, I mean, but if a DEA if agent, I mean, if the DEA comes and raids a marijuana shop and they steal $100,000 out of the, the safe in the back and they report that they've found $25,000 and, you know, when they actually write it down and it gets logged into the evidence room – there's not really much that you can do about that if you can go and see, even if you can go and investigate their records. And to some extent, government budgets are available publicly. Yes. What they do, what kind of trickery they right. do to keep money off the budget is another question. Well, they certainly and that, do that. They'll list things, you know, in very broad terms. So they don't tell you we spent $275.14 on staples. They just say, office supplies Mm -hmm. and lump everything that is used in the office under office supplies right but there's always uh like millions of dollars every year in the budget that's just supposedly missing like i think everybody remembers back in 2001 when donald rumsfeld had a press conference and said well we don't know where these millions of dollars went trillions Mm -hmm. trillions that's that makes it even better of course they 
Of course they do. They just they're not going to tell you because they put it in their own pockets. And well, if the right, so knew, why would they would let you have them. transparency? I mean, why would they want you to have any semblance of transparency? I mean, it's one thing to say that hey, that's a good idea, and sure, if you're going to have a government, the more transparent, the better. I agree with you there. But of course, these people are corrupted individuals. So what would in, in, incentivize them to even allow for such a change? We, well, we the people shouldn't stand for it. We the people, I mean, if you look at how Come on. it's set up. What do you, wait, 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 whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. I get where you're coming from, but you don't think that we the people are going to get into the streets and occupy over the issue of DEA budgets. I mean, it's well, hard to get, well, it's hard to get anybody in this country to, to get out into the streets oh. and do anything. I mean, they, they can b oh. drop bombs on innocent people children around the world and people in america don't get out in the streets i highly doubt that transparency is going to bring people out into the streets as an issue to motivate 29 years ago the city of philadelphia live on television dropped a bomb on an apartment complex that left 200 and some odd people homeless because it burned 61 houses and people weren't in the streets. Wasn't that called the Move uh, Project or something like that? There was a, a group called Move. They were basically, you know, black power activists that the city of Philadelphia wanted to get out of this apartment. So the city of Philadelphia <laughs> dropped what essentially was a bomb. It was a thing of c4 that they detonated after it landed burned 61 houses left 200 and some odd people homeless and people weren't out in the streets we saw oh. where what was it the fbi and the atf burned down a building with 87 people inside of it and people weren't out in the streets right but if there is more well, transparency I, people would know more about this issue and like it why, happened on why national these things, television right but how many people do you think actually knew what was going not on not very many a lot go ahead with your final thoughts i just wanted to say that it, i find that it's it sad then it, then if if that's the case if if Innocent people can die, and we are willing to just stand back and continue on going on with our lives. We should really sit down and reevaluate how we view things and come to the understanding that life is life. You might not necessarily agree with what they do, what they become, but the fact that they are life and they still have the same opportunity, they should be still have the same opportunities as you do. I'm with you Why a lot. Thanks for the call tonight. Fun. I appreciate it, as Not always. 855 450 free. You take control on Free Talk Live. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com it's already too late. Criminals have kicked in your door and are now in your home. Before this happens, homeowners have a choice. One, do nothing and hope you aren't one of the 1.4 million families attacked each year. Or two, refuse to be a victim and for as low as $59, reinforce your doors with door devils. Door devils simply attach to existing door frames and have proven to stop the biggest bad guys from kicking in doors. Read our police testimonials of real-life events at doordevil.com. Alarms don't stop kick-ins. We do. Doordevil.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. 
This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot freetalklive.com If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm That's amp.lrn.fm Free Talk Live Take control toll free here at 855-450-FREE That's 855-450-3733 Join us online Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there You can control the content of the site Submit different news stories or YouTube videos, blog posts Whatever link to whatever you think's interesting online You submit it at freetalklive.com via our Reddit-based system and Then that allows you to vote uh, vote what you uh, what you like up Vote down what you do not like over at freetalklive.com, and then we'll know by simply visiting our own website what you, the listeners, think is interesting. Need focus? Are you feeling fatigued trying to get that extra edge when it counts? There's just so much going on all at once in our lives these days. Every moment, it seems like we just can't keep track of everything, and it's easy to get tired. Don't you wish there was something that could get you out of the rut, give you the focus you need, and help you get things done? Well, there may be modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world continue to talk about how modafinil from modup.net is making the difference in their work, giving them that critical edge that they need. Check it out at modup.net and look into it for yourself. That's M-O-D-U-P, modup.net. They offer fast delivery and worldwide, by the way, for guaranteed high-quality modafinil at an amazing price. At modup.net, you can get a discount for paying with Bitcoin, by the way. 33% off for Bitcoin payments. And to make the deal even better, use the code FTL to get 10 free tablets with your order. That's code FTL at modup.net. Remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show and modup.net ships worldwide. It is your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. So go learn more at modup.net. And don't forget our discount code, uh, the bonus code, I guess you could call it, FTL at modup.net. All right, so we're talking about drugs. We've got the DEA's Michelle Leonhardt. She's at it again. Uh, this time she and her agents, the DEA, are threatening doctors who are involved with medical marijuana operations in various different places. In this case, the story is out of Boston. Is that right? Uh, yes, I believe so. And it, it's really confusing because they're intimidating people to cut ties with marijuana firms. But uh, as, as we go further into this article, it talks about how puzzling it is. The DEA's actions are especially puzzling given how highly regulated the Massachusetts medical marijuana system is in comparison to that of other states. 
The hmm. Justice Department even decided in August to allow recreational marijuana to move forward in Washington and Colorado, setting out an approach to state legalization of marijuana based on the premise that states would implement strong and effective regulatory and enforcement systems. Well, not only that, but about a month and a half ago, there was news out of Washington, D.C. itself that the city council there had voted to decriminalize marijuana. So, I mean, it's it's even happening right under their own nose there in D.C. It hasn't gone through yet, but it's about to, I think, in the next uh, several weeks. Right, which really makes you question what their purpose is for intimidating these doctors. It well, is a good question. you know, because they said that they weren't going to go after the dispensaries, and they wouldn't go after the people that had licenses to grow and sell and they're not. They're going after the people suggesting that, hey, maybe you should, you know, use Try some this. cannabis. Well, that still doesn't answer the question as to what their motivation is. I mean, this is, it's game over for the DEA. Their motivation is that they want to keep fighting the drug war because mm -hmm. their budget depends on it. Mm. Wait, so there's a possible explanation in this next paragraph. Romano told the Huffington Post that he hasn't heard of the DA going after doctors in other states with strict, strict regulations on medical marijuana. Massachusetts has this really highly regulated framework where there's a lot of effort put into making sure medicine is really only for patients. And I've not heard of this in any other state with such a framework. So I guess they're trying to keep it so that only actual patients are going to get the marijuana and not somebody who's just walking into a clinic like, oh, I've got some back pain. I need to get this marijuana. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe it is, you know, stated publicly that they're doing this for people's interests in that they just want to keep marijuana specifically for uh, people who really need it. Right. But if that's why they're doing it, then why in Massachusetts, where it's the most regulated? Why not in California to where anybody can go into one of these, you know, doctor people that will just auto sign anything where you say oh yeah i've got this back cramp and the doctor doesn't even give you an examination some nurse takes your blood pressure takes a temperature and then the doctor signs away yeah you need a bunch of weed right but if it's already highly regulated in massachusetts it would make sense that they want to keep it that way I mean, they they wouldn't want to relinquish their controls over it, the medical it marijuana industry. It makes no sense for the DEA to go tell doctors, we will take your license if you prescribe this. Not even if they prescribe it, but if they're on a board of uh, an organization about marijuana, right? That was what right. the first story was exactly. about. Exactly. And I don't know. I find it kind of strange, but I, like, I, I can't tell you what the DEA is thinking here. Like, it just seems as if... They want to keep people from prescribing it as much as possible so they're, that it's they're just more restricted. jerks. I mean, they they just have no respect for the law itself, right? Like, it, it, the, there's this idea that this is a nation of laws, but clearly, well, it the is DEA a nation, doesn't care. It is a nation of laws, and I forget who said it, but I love the quote. It's a nation of laws, poorly written and randomly enforced. But mm. it is a nation of laws. Right, and, the, and they're saying that you can dispute this in court— Great. But, How much does that yeah. cost? Exactly. Like they're they're just setting up this whole system where like you think you're doing something that's perfectly legal and then all of a sudden, you know, you have the DEA knocking on your door saying like, "Well, give up your license or you're going to have to take this to court." So, like what what purpose does that I, serve? I missed the part about they were only going after doctors that were sitting on boards of medical dispens medical cannabis well, is that all they're going after that was what they one of the things they said in the article but are they also well, going after just doctors prescribing my it? question is and i don't know the answer hopefully one of our listeners does is there a regulation that other doctors cannot also be on like the board of directors of a prescription medicine company hmm. because if there is that would almost make sense. I see what you're saying. To where they're saying, you know, like, you can't be on the board of directors of Pfizer and mm -hmm. be a practicing medical doctor. Seems unlikely. You can't yes. be a practicing medical doctor and be on the board of directors of, you know, this company that is growing and dispensing this medication. Because that would seem to be a conflict of interest. Right. So, so if the that's what they're doing, that kind of makes sense. 
The article says that they're threatening doctors affiliated with medical marijuana dispensaries in Massachusetts. Hmm. So I guess if you're just affiliated with these dispensaries. And how do you running. define affiliated with? Apparently it means being on the board and it probably means writing a prescription for that agency as well would be my guess. Right. And Any involvement. It says you either give up your DEA license or you give up your position on the board or you challenge it in court. Yeah. So and a I good on that guy, okay. the, the beginning story, he actually gave up his DEA license. He said, well, I really don't need this anymore, so see you later. Right. And, I mean, that's that's probably the smart thing to do just to avoid the conflict. But yeah. I don't know. I would like to see uh, more doctors, you know, trying to get affiliation with me- medical marijuana facilities just so that it's more of an accepted idea. Yeah, for sure. Because, like, I, I just don't understand why it's still illegal. I know we talk about this a lot, but it's it's just ridiculous to me that it's a plant that causes no harm and actually has severe benefits. And it's still, you know, the DEA is actually, like, knocking on people's doors, leaving them voicemails, threatening them with, like, a, a lot of punishment if they, they don't give up their affiliations. What I find to be the most ludicrous part of the whole drug war is that barely 100 years ago, you could buy cannabis, heroin, and morphine from the Sears catalog. You could buy you your could be- syringes and your needles from the Sears catalog. You right. could walk down to the corner store as a 10-year-old boy or girl and walk in and take away a whole bottle full of heroin if you wanted to. Yeah. You could buy Coca-Cola and there's actually cocaine in it. Uh, times they are changing. 855 450 free is the toll free number. Share your thoughts on the DEA, the war on drugs. Maybe even answer for Ellen's sort of rhetorical question, I guess, of, well, why is this stuff still illegal? It's shocking to her that it's still illegal. I think a lot of us are tired of this insane war on drugs. It's time for it to end, but unfortunately, the system does not change quickly. It's Free Talk Live. 855 450 free. Would you like to meet like minded people from all over? and have a spectacular vacation while sharing ideas about liberty, free markets, and individual rights? If so, Cato University is for you. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event. Cato University brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the globe, all sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University's widening popularity is due not only to the quality of the attendees, faculty, and topics, but to the opportunity it provides you to form new and enduring friendships and for sharing experiences and perspectives in a -a one-of-a-kind, engaging environment. This year's Cato University is being held at the Rancho Bernardo Inn, a beautiful, quiet resort just north of San Diego. Cato University runs from July 27th to August 1st. To plan your trip to Cato University or for more information, visit catouniversity.org. Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host Cheryl for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no hair has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the no-no, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible no-no hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. 
That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything that you want here toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features. On our site, you can head over there and get interactive in a variety of different ways. And if you like Free Talk Live, then you can support the show. Go to shop.freetalklive.com. You can buy all kinds of great stuff there. Shop.freetalklive.com. And we get a cut of the sale whenever you do through those links on shop.freetalklive.com. Now, there are some things you can't get at a place like Amazon, and that would be bitcoins you can't go and buy bitcoins at amazon you have to go to expresscoin.com now you remember cash into coins.com cash yep. into coins is now known as expresscoin this is the big news that they've been holding back on as they've been testing out their brand new site expresscoin.com i went and i signed up for an account it was pretty easy the other night and it's the best choice for buying bitcoins or Dogecoin. More easy, so fast, much legal, wow, inexpensive. ExpressCoin still prides themselves on their customer service, and you can get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer. Just start off over at ExpressCoin.com, and you can get their smartphone app now, ExpressCoin.com. So are the features the same? Singular, not plural. Right. Did I did I pluralize? No, I just okay, misheard good. it and went to the wrong site ah, and gotcha. got an error message. Expresscoin.com. What was your question? See, I've used uh, coins in or cash into coin.com before. Yeah. But uh, does does it have like the same features? Yes. Or is it just more improved now? It's a better looking website, I think, and the uh, they do still have money order, check, wire transfer. So it's right. You know, the same crew, it's the same Is it the people. same concept that, like, if you buy $40 or less worth of Bitcoin, you know, there's no you know, service I'm fee? glad you asked about that because I was actually poking around on their website. It's not in their copy for us to share on the air. But, yes, when I was looking through their frequently asked questions, it was still in there, the $40. You buy less than $40 worth of Bitcoin and there's no fee. Yeah, okay, that's, over, that's pretty cool. And if it's over $40, it's still the 3% fee as well, which to me is a very, very reasonable fee at uh, expresscoin.com. So go and get yourself your account today. So we were talking about the DEA, the, the insane war on drugs. It's one of my pet issues. Uh, it's always been a concern for me, and I would love to see an end to the war on drugs. And Ellen, it's, it's, it is really confusing as to why this continues on. But I think Daryl hit the main reason on the head earlier, and that is there's a lot of money in it. There's so much momentum in the war on drugs. The DEA and local police agencies and state police agencies... Is there really, though? It seems like it's such a waste of money. Oh, it's that total waste of money. They're paying for all this man hours well, to like, right. go search but for drugs. But for the drugs. people that are getting the man hours, for them... It's not a waste of money because that's how they put food on the table. That's how they send their kids to college. Not only that, but they get to do this wonderful, joyous thing called asset forfeiture mm, yes. to where all they have to do is say that, well, we think that Ellen may have possibly maybe used this in a drug transaction. And we can now take your cell phone, your car, your house, all of the money out of your bank account. And if you want to retrieve any of those things, 
then you must then file a lawsuit against the federal government. And then it goes to a judge, not Ellen Ball v. Department of you know Drugs and whatever else. It is DEA versus House. DEA versus two hundred seventy five thousand dollars. DEA versus cell phone. Wow, that's so impersonal. I think so they how am I supposed to, to do this if I don't have a cell phone or car or the they house don't or have money? To charge you with anything to keep your stuff. Yep. And in a lot of cities, especially the larger ones, you will see that the cops drive around in really nice cars and they have a big message written on the back saying, "We stole this from somebody." Really? They don't actually say we stole it. This car was confiscated from a drug dealer. Yep. This Cadillac Escalade was confiscated from I a think drug got dealer. I one of those in Sarasota where I'm from. This- so where's the legalese that says that this is okay? Uh, well, the, yeah, it's asset forfeiture. I mean, yeah, got- the, the federal government passed a law allowing this thing called asset forfeiture. You know, I have to say, I was surprised, Daryl. My tenants at one time uh, in the past, prior to the Keene Activist Center and the Shire Free Church, my tenants uh, were busted. One of them was busted for growing cannabis in the house. And I thought for sure they were going to try to do something to me because, you know, I'm a known activist or whatever. The, the, the state would love to come after me for something. Right. I was shocked that they didn't try to take my house from me for that. I wonder if it's because they were tenants. Well, don't so give them any I, ideas. Well, no, but I, I don't think they could have. Right. Like, that there's always the thing of plausible deniability when yeah. it's a tenant that is doing something. True, but I at the same but time But if they remember- really wanted to, and I think if it would have been a second or a third offense, Maybe. then they would have. But well, I the remember way you, the- Sorry, the way you put it sounded very general, like they, she could have possibly at some point used this at one time or another. Like, couldn't they just come up with some sort of reason like it doesn't even have house? to be yeah it well, doesn't even have to be based on reality they could just be like well we suspect that this happened so like a decade ago on free talk live they were talking about passing something called the rave act at the federal government level that would have essentially allowed uh government agents maybe state government agents to take property and to basically screw over landlords if landlord had you know the landlord had tenants that had drug dealing going on at their house or growing pot or manufacturing other drugs or whatever, that they would give the government even more leeway to take people's houses and things like that from them. And I guess maybe that never really went through, would be my guess, because it would seem like the first thing that would be on their minds would be, oh, well, found a grow room? Well, we can take this house now. So I guess it doesn't apply as widely as maybe it could as far as the asset forfeiture but in a lot of cases, there's a lot of uh, cars and houses that can go to government agents. And I know one example specifically was from Bradenton, Florida, which is a town just north of where I was born and raised in, in Florida. There was news as of a few years ago about a constant stream of cars coming into the sheriff's department there because they had come up with their own form. And this is an interesting little trick. Cause it's different. It's not really asset forfeiture in, in its classic sense. Because in asset forfeiture, there's more of a process, more of a legal process, I think, that you have to go through than this. But what they would do is they'd pull you over. Uh, Mr. Perry, it looks like we found some uh, marijuana in the back. What? I didn't have any marijuana. What? You, pl- you, know, you planted that. Well, looks like we found some marijuana here, Mr. Perry, and you're going to be going to jail. It's, this. Hmm, that's 28 grams. That's a felony here in Florida. You're going to jail for uh, maybe three to seven years, uh, Daryl. Tell you what, we've got a uh, form here, and I see this is a uh, car run. It's good, what, 100,000 miles? All right. Uh, look, here's this form. You can just sign the form and uh, tell you what, we'll let you walk home, and we'll just take the car, and we'll call it a day. What do you say? That's extortion. Look. We can take you to jail, and you can go to prison for three to seven years on felony charges for marijuana possession. You've got more than 21 grams of pot here. That's a felony, Daryl. Would you like to sign this piece of paper and hand your car title over to us, and then we will go ahead and drop these charges? So what you're saying is they don't even need to charge you with anything. That's correct. They can just take your They don't charge them. The people will... Almost everybody will sign that piece of paper and sign their title over to the sheriff's department right there on the spot. The cops get to tow or drive the car away, and you get to walk home a free man. What a deal. That's terrifying and terrible at the same time. Like You can't just put 
complete power <laughs> into these people's hands. It's like, oh yeah, I'll just give up my car because I'm afraid of you. Right. Like, and there's no real record of the the stop even happening except for the fact that they've got the car now. So like they've got the car and there's you know going to be some sort of official notation in the radio log yeah. of. Yeah, I pulled over a car with license plate, blah, 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 245. Right, but if there's no documentation, no evidence, like it, it, you're basically just giving up your property That's for right. nothing. That's right, threat, yeah. It's extortion. Straight up. Like, I just feel like people <laughs> should be outraged by this. Like, why doesn't they every single be. person say, like, fuck, or sorry, like, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, they should be uh, outraged by that, and but they aren't, because the cops will pick on people who don't have any money they'll pick on poor people right they're they going after people who, who are like uh, okay with being a victim which well they may not be okay with it but they can't do anything to afford to do anything about it you know they don't have an attorney and you certainly can't walk one, into the public defender's office and get them to step up and help you because you've never had any charge leveled against and you the reason people aren't outraged about it is because well obviously if they're taking somebody's car and well, they're signing this form saying, I had drugs, you can have my car. Well, obviously, those aren't the most upstanding people in society, and they deserve to have things happen. Those are bad people. They broke the law, Ellen. They deserve to have their stuff taken from them because they deserve to be punished. It's not even legally proven yet, though. You're basically just putting all the legal power into the police officer that's handing, handling the issue in that moment. Right, but the reason people aren't outraged about it is because they get told these are bad people. Right, so they tell themselves that they deserve it. 855 450 free. Take control of the airwaves here. Hour number two is on the way. This is Free Talk Live. You know Lumber Liquidators for having the best selection of flooring at the lowest prices. And right now, you can buy one floor and get 50% off another on their thickest and best dream home laminates. No games, no gimmicks, just huge savings off already ridiculously low prices. Plus, get great deals on pre-finished hardwood and morning star bamboo. So go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store. Special financing is available. But hurry, this buy one, get one sale ends Tuesday, June 3rd. Gold Bond presents Shaquille O'Neal. So I'm hanging out with my Gold Bond buddies, and they're like, Shaq, Shaq, great job with the Gold Bond powder spray. People love it. So I'm soaking in the good vibes, kicking off my shoes. Next thing I know, they're coming out with a new foot powder spray. Boom. Shaq strikes again. Gold Bond No Mess Powder Spray cools and refreshes your body. And new Gold Bond Foot Powder Spray has two times the odor-absorbing powders to do the same for your feet. Stay cool with Gold Bond. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, June 6, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,253. Silver opened at 1906 and Bitcoin is trading at $658. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM. June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. 
Support also comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Online, accountableauthority.com. In the news, the Los Angeles Police Department acquired two drones this week, enabling them to move closer towards using drones for manhunts, standoffs, and other tactical events. The drones were given to LAPD free of charge from the Seattle Police Department. Each remote-controlled copter is about three feet in width, has three rotors, and is equipped to carry a video camera. CBS reports the FAA must grant the LAPD with a certificate to use the drone. The application process is still in the preliminary stages. A 14-year-old female San Marcos student confided in her parents that she was asked how far she was willing to go sexually during a sex education lesson. Woodland Park Middle School reportedly asked students to stand under signs labeled smiled at, hugged, kissed, above the waist, below the waist, and all the way. That's according to a report from 10 News. School officials defended the dating lesson, saying the goal was to discuss what is appropriate for dating at the middle school level. Students felt embarrassed because they thought the teacher wanted to know how far each would go sexually. The school's principal says the lesson has been in use for several years now. Pakistani officials are calling CIA drone strikes illegal and a criminal act that needs to be investigated. On Thursday, a Pakistani court ordered police to investigate murder allegations against senior CIA officer Jonathan Banks. Human rights campaigners say the move opens up the doorway for other cases to be brought against the U.S. Reports show more than 60% of drone strikes target private homes in the middle of the night, often killing innocent families in their sleep. On Wednesday night, a U.S. drone strike killed three men in Yemen. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all-natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books, now offering ProPure Water Filtration, the only gravity-driven all-in-one fluoride removal system that also alkalizes the water. Find them in Austin, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online, BraveNewBookstore.com. This is The Liberty Beat for Friday, June 6, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com. One year after Edward Snowden blew the whistle on government spying, a digital rights group said Thursday it has identified steps that major tech companies and individuals can take to avoid surveillance. The nonprofit Fight for the Future has launched its Reset the Net campaign to identify steps that can be taken to protect online privacy. According to Al Jazeera, the campaign called on large tech companies to encrypt their websites and is promoting easy-to-use tools that individuals can use to shield their phones and computers from NSA spying. The world's second-largest mobile phone company, Vodafone, revealed that government agencies in six unidentified countries use its network to listen to and record customers' calls, showing the scale of telecom eavesdropping around the world. Reuters reports the United States and Britain both came in for global scrutiny and criticism after Edward Snowden disclosed their vast phone, email, and Internet surveillance operations. But Vodafone, which has 400 million customers in countries across Europe, Africa, and Asia, said in its disclosure report released Friday that countries in its reach are using similar practices. Federal prosecutor Harold Range announced an investigation over alleged snooping on Angela Merkel's mobile phone by the NSA in a case that has soured relations between Germany and the U.S. Range told broadcaster ARD on Wednesday that questioning the chancellor was not on the agenda. He added that there were also no plans at the moment to question former NSA contractor turned whistleblower Edward Snowden, who leaked the evidence about the mass surveillance program, including that of the spying on Merkel's phone by the NSA. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Mass Appeal, affordable, high-quality printing, now accepting Bitcoin, online at MassAppealInc.com. And support comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, June 6, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Nothing you do or say will ever reach the lofty heights attained by the following news summary. This is The Onion Week in Review. Facing increased market pressure and a shrinking bottom line, media company Star Trove was forced to lay off dozens of unskilled bloggers this week. Sources confirmed that before being dismissed, many of the bloggers had been with the company for months, regularly performing menial tasks such as describing celebrity outfits and composing quizzes about Disney characters. I mean, I've been with this company for almost a year. 
It wasn't the most rewarding job, and I didn't have health insurance, but it paid the bills. I'm already 25 years old. I just don't know where to go from here. In other news, a six-day visit to a rural African village completely changes a woman's Facebook profile picture. A new dating website helps plus-size Jewish plane crash survivors find love. And a kid figures he'll go down the slide 36 more times and then call it a day. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. We're here to take your calls. You dial in toll-free and bring up anything that you might like at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio this evening, it's Ian here. Ellen. And Daryl. Ellen's here courtesy of ALP. Ellen, that's your radio show you do as a podcast only now. Although, are you yeah. live streaming it still? We do live stream it on Ustream. Okay, cool. And you're doing it every week yep. with your co-host, Allie. And listeners can go and find it and uh, past episodes over half a year's worth of shows. Oh, almost a year, actually. Oh, really? Yes, we actually just did our 44th episode. That is getting close. I know. All right, so uh, go to alpshow.com. You can download there. That's ALP Show. What was this week's topic, if you recall? Uh, this week, we covered uh, children's rights, and we actually hmm. had Carlos Morales of Truth Over Comfort on as a guest. And Children have rights? It seems like they are uh, pretty much yeah. in a tough spot. <laughs> right, and that's actually what the discussion was about. You know, like, how children should be treated, legally speaking, mm -hmm. what rights they do have as human beings. You know, are they able to make decisions for themselves? That Sounds like an interesting conversation, and you guys always get into depth on one topic, basically, every single week. Yep. So, very cool. Go and check it out at alpshow.com as we go to Dave in Utah. Dave, uh, you're listening to KZNU. What's on your mind tonight? Hey, you know, you were talking about that asset forfeiture thing. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, I remember back in the early 90s, that was a very, very big thing along the Interstate 10 corridor. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the southern states, I mean, supported their police departments doing that. But there was a civil uprising over that back in the 90s. And that's what calmed it down. Because it had gotten very carried away in the early 90s. You feel like it's calmed down? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. No, I. they used to be stopping 20 and 30 cars a day in Louisiana and doing that. In Alabama. Just taking people's cars. Yep. Wow. All so what was the civil uprising like that. that you're talking about? Well, actually, if I remember correctly, I may be a little off, but I believe that one of the CBS evening news shows did a big report on what was going on. And the public actually got very upset over it. And so hmm. other than a lot of the smaller towns and police departments along I-10, most of the larger police departments stopped that practice. Uh, and some of the small towns kept it up for a while and still do today, I presume. But, but uh, therefore, while it was really big. Thanks for the perspective on that. I, that's interesting. I wonder if it's if it's just a something that happened in your area uh, or in you know in Louisiana. Oh, no, I, guess I, Louisiana. I was living I was living in California at the time. I just remember it going on, hmm. and and I remember a lot of publicity about it. Well, so, I hope you're I, right, and that, that that's what's happened, rather than maybe it just becoming so commonplace that people are acclimated to it at this point. I'd, I'd be interested no, in seeing I, the numbers. You know, what was it like in yeah, 1990s and, versus uh, today? And I'm sure some research could show that, but I do believe that it's a lot less than it was prevalent in the early oh. 90s. Thanks for sharing your thoughts tonight, Dave. Anything else on your mind? <laughs> No, that's it. I appreciate Thanks. hearing from you. The toll-free uh, number is 855-450-FREE. Still to come here tonight, a disturbing story out of California about a college sex agreement, meaning that you would have to have an agreement with another person before having sex with them. Daryl will give us that story. And also from copblock.org, since we're talking about the police, this fits in here from uh, Greg Young out of Melbourne, Florida. Before you get into yeah. that, I, I want to sort of agree with Dave. Maybe maybe the civil asset forfeiture is not as prevalent as it was. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're doing these other tricks that you were talking about, Ian, saying, you know, 
if you sign away your car, then we won't press charges. If you yeah, give us your property, that's technically not asset forfeiture. That's not asset forfeiture, so it doesn't go on the books as asset forfeiture. Mm, good point. So, and the, but I don't know how often that goes on, Daryl. I know it happened in Bradenton, Florida. I don't know if that's something that is commonplace. I don't know. Not. I've lived in several cities across the country, and in most of them, I have seen police cars with the wording. This car was seized from a drug dealer. No, that's true. That's true. Yeah, so and that's I don't, not know what we're that talking it about. Happens. Right. That's standard asset forfeiture. What you were talking about is definitely not standard. The civil asset, asset, asset forfeiture. I know it happens because I get the emails from Downsize DC all the time to where they cite numerous cases mm-hmm. all the time of it happening. Right. And I don't know if you guys remember this story from earlier. I think it was last year. But uh, Gary Chase, who lives in Winchester, who had mm-hmm. all of his property taken away, um, I don't know if that was something similar where he was violating a town ordinance and they just took and sold all of his property. Uh, hmm. I guess that's forfeiture. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's similar. They told but- him he was violating the zoning ordinance of having stuff on his property. Yeah. And they did go in and they stealed that, uh, stole that stuff. You can go to freekeen.com if you want to learn more about that story. Just type in Gary Chase and a couple of videos will come up. Poor guy. He's really been screwed pretty hard by uh, by the town. So uh, back to the cop block story here, or to the cop block story. Interesting details about the police. We've talked in a number of times on Free Talk Live about how it is that police have no obligation to protect you. They have no obligation to protect you. They have no obligation to even show up. They have no obligation to return your phone calls. They have no obligation to you whatsoever. Anything they do for you or anything they appear to do for you is simply because they want to look good. They want to have PR or maybe they just want to arrest you. But if they actually are doing something helpful, then that's not because they're obligated to us because, you know, you might have found a nice cop or something like that. Right. They're not like legally obligated to put themselves in harm's way in order to save you. So they're not really out there to protect people. They're just, they wait until the situation is calmed down and then so they'll true. come out and officer and help. safety comes first. Exactly. With the police. So Well, they have families to go home to, Ian. Mm. <laughs> Couldn't take any risks on the job for anyone else. They have families. Well, they but they want you at the same time to believe that they are protecting you. So they have this balancing act where they have to make it look like they're doing something to protect you or protect people in general. But on the other hand, they really just want to protect themselves. And right, and they're not necessarily incentivized to protect people. I mean, they're more incentivized to stay alive and you know keep out of situations that are really you know, uh, sure. dangerous. Who wants to go and face a mad gunman when you can just go and bust a pothead? Right. Still they're, get an arrest. They're, they're not, it doesn't seem like they're super concerned with protecting citizens. They're more so pr- concerned with like protecting themselves. Just a little while ago, according to Greg Young's post at copblock.org, there was a video going around that showed an officer being beaten by a citizen in a fight. The police chief said he was disappointed and surprised that people stood by and let it happen. On the other hand, the video of the guy who was seriously injured that stopped a knife-wielding mass murderer on the New York City subway while the cops stood behind a closed door and watched also went viral. The NYPD said to remember that the Supreme Court ruled in 1980 and reaffirmed since then, multiple times by the way, that police do not have a constitutional responsibility to protect a citizen from harm. Police have no legal duty to respond to prevent crime or to protect the victim. There have been over 10 various Supreme and state court cases, and the individual has never won. Notably, the Supreme Court stated about the responsibility of police for the security of your family and loved ones the following, quote, You and only you are responsible for your security and the security of your family and loved ones, unquote. That was the essence of a U.S. Supreme Court decision in the early 80s when they ruled that police do not have a duty to protect you as an individual, but to protect society as a whole, which is a translation to mean that they protect themselves, they protect the politicians and political class. They protect the laws. So I've got an idea. We sue the police, not in regular court, but through the Fair Trade Commission for false advertising. Because pretty much every police department across the country has as their motto, 
to serve and protect. Right, they but are that's doing vague. neither. Therefore, they are falsely you advertising. You are incorrect, sir. They are serving and protecting their masters in the legislature. Yeah, they're serving and protecting the laws that are out there, and they're enforcing those laws. As Ellen pointed out, it's a vague statement, but it's not false if they are serving and protecting someone. It's just not you. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. They're serving and they're protecting their masters, and you are not one of them, nor am I, nor is anyone listening for the most part, unless you work for the government class or work for the ruling class. Then you have some level of protection and service by the police. We're coming up here. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the red planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. You know Lumber Liquidators for having the best selection of flooring at the lowest prices. And right now, you can buy one floor and get 50% off another on their thickest and best dream home laminates. No games, no gimmicks, just huge savings off already ridiculously low prices. Plus, get great deals on pre-finished hardwood and morning star bamboo. So go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest you. Special financing is available. But hurry, this buy one, get one sale ends Tuesday, June 3rd. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. In a deal policymakers have hailed as a decisive step towards combating the rapidly escalating national debt, the United States settled 1,200 millionth of a percent of its debt to China this week with a single autographed photograph of John Hamm. The sale of the glossy signed headshot of the acclaimed actor, which China reportedly accepted for a financial easement of approximately $150 out of America's estimated $1.3 trillion in obligations, concludes a six-month negotiation between the two parties. The decision was obvious not an easy one. But without question, this was the right choice for our nation's future. And in this week's science news, a distant planet is terrified that it might be able to someday support human life. In other news, a live cow is lowered onto the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives. The majority of an office's supplies are used to apply for different jobs, and a lapsed cult member only attends Sanctum on major bloodletting holidays. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM.
Free Talk Live. You are invited to bring up whatever you want by dialing toll-free here to 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we share on the site, freetalklive.com. One of the features is free coffee for you. You get a free pound of the best of the best coffee from BuzzBox. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. All you have to do is pay the cost of shipping. The pound itself is free. What do you do to get it? You go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Now, BuzzBox is competitively priced with other high-end coffees, but they do something special that the other coffee producers just aren't interested in, it seems. BuzzBox has set up a co-op. And it's a program that allows people to buy into that co-op around the world. Plus, they've teamed up with World Vision to give micro loans to folks, make better lives, help them make better lives for themselves, start businesses, uh, expand their existing business, that kind of thing. What we want to do is we want to find Free Talk Live listeners like you who might love coffee, want to try out coffee.freetalklive.com, get that free pound, get started with their auto ship program, which, by the way, you can cancel at any time. You just pay the shipping cost, you get that free pound at coffee.freetalklive.com. And every 10 Free Talk Live listeners that signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com funds one microloan for somebody in a tough part of the world uh, to live in, trying to make the, a better life for themselves. So you get great coffee, and people get a, another chance at uh, being a success all around the world. Coffee. Dot freetalklive.com. Go get your free pound. Just pay the shipping cost, and you can do it now at coffee.freetalklive.com. We're talking about the no obligation to protect. It's an issue that has come up a number of times in the past here on Free Talk Live, and I think that's because it's a really important, like, shocking, kind of iconoclastic thing. If you listen to the government agents, they sure do make it sound like they're going to protect you. And uh, George Bush and Barack Obama are two individuals who I can specifically remember saying things like, it's my job to protect the American people. And maybe there's your, your lawsuit, uh, Daryl. The police say protect and serve, but they just don't tell you who they're protecting and serving. The head, the president, the head of the executive branch, I have heard presidents make the, the claim that it's their job to protect the American people. Well, see, more, more often I've heard the statement that it's their job to protect the interests of the United States people. Mm. And they could claim that that's pretty much anything because, that's true. you know, who is the United States? We, we, like, we have where to do put, those interests lie? We have to put everybody in jail and then we'll be safe. Finally. Padded cells. Uh, so there's an interesting contrast to this the fact that the government. Supreme Court, state courts have ruled over and over again there's no obligation for them to protect you. Not only is there no obligation to protect, but I believe the no obligation thing goes further in that there's no obligation to provide any service. So even though they obligate you to pay for their services, they are not in turn obligated to provide you with their services as right. well. Right, and it's very sad that you hear stories like this sometimes, uh, like especially uh, stories about people living in Detroit. Like there was an article that I read not too long ago where this man was living across the street from a dangerous like drug dealing house, and there was gunshots fired, and the police just never showed up. They're like, "Oh, just stay inside, you'll be fine." And yeah, this right. happens all the time. Like if police are called, the, sometimes they don't show up for a while, or they, they do don't anything. send proper assistance. You can file a complaint, and that's it. That's all you can do about it. So. Interesting contrast here. They got the articles from copblock.org. He says, this got me to thinking about the legal reasoning behind a citizen not helping when asked by a cop. It seems that here in Florida, it's a crime not to assist with an arrest or the capture of an escaped prisoner. That's right. You can go to jail for not jumping into the fray if a law officer asks you for help. So they're not obligated to help you, but you... At least if you live in Florida, and there may be legislation like this in a bunch of other states. Who knows? There's a lot of boilerplate legislation out there that's just copied around. In Florida, at the very least, Section 843.04, refusing to assist prison officers in arresting escaped convicts. Number one, all prison officers and correctional officers shall immediately arrest any convict held under the provisions of law who may have escaped. Any such officer or guard may call upon the sheriff or other officer of the state or of any county or municipal corporation, or any citizen, to make search and arrest such convict. See, this reminds me of the word hostage. Just because if, if you're just standing there and there's some altercation happening across the street and the police officer is like, 
you go over there and try to defuse the situation right. because, like, I can't. I, I have to be around to serve and protect the rest of the people around here. I've got a family to go home right. to. <laughs> Ellen, there's a madman over there holding children at gunpoint. You're going to need to go help out. Nice. <laughs> we'll, we'll cover you. You know what this actually reminds me of? And I know that I'm going to anger some people when I say this. It reminds me of the Fugitive Slave Acts, and the only state that said we will not enforce it was Wisconsin. Where what the fugitive you look confused. The Fugitive Slave Acts were the laws that said that if there is an escaped slave, mm. you must, you must, Help not you can, not you probably should if you're able to you must help capture the fugitive slave and return him to his master you said wisconsin was the only state that did not enforce that wisconsin meaning they had the law on the books but they wouldn't enforce it was it? a federal law oh, oh okay a federal law I didn't the state that. of wisconsin passed a law saying we will not enforce this wow Nullify. the wisconsin supreme court upheld that law hmm. saying that no Nobody in this state shall be compelled to comply wow. with the Federal Fugitive Slave Act. It's a great right. nullification story. That's pretty impressive. But is it that surprising that they would in, they would make it a law that people have to help uh, like comply with officers and law? Like, of course, they're going to want all the help that they can get. And if you can get like children to tell on their parents, or sure. you know, just bystanders randomly, you, they'll call the police on somebody who's you know maybe smoking pot in public. You know, it's just things like that. People are led to believe that they have this duty to help out officers. And I guess now it's legally enforceable, which to me is just crazy because it's it's the worst kind of Stockholm Syndrome, I guess. Not only do you accept the fact that your life is being controlled, but you also allow direct control over your actions. Yeah, you become a tool of the state. Uh, by the way, it's a misdemeanor. If you refuse, any citizen refusing to assist shall be guilty of a misdemeanor in the first degree, which usually means up to a year in jail in most places. At least it's not a felony. Add to that Section 843.06 in Florida, neglect or refusal to aid peace officers. Quote, whoever being required in the name of the state by any officer of the Florida Highway Patrol, police officer, beverage enforcement agent, or watchman, neglects or refuses to assist him or her in the execution of his or her office in a criminal case, or in the preservation of the peace, or in the apprehending and securing of any person for a breach of the peace, or in the case of the rescue or escape of a person arrested upon civil process, shall be guilty of a misdemeanor of the second degree. The punishable beverage as control. The beverage Apparently. control people can tell you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Beverage control? What are you talking about? Like, are you talking about soda pop or and That would be the alcohol. likely the alcohol. It's probably like the liquor enforcement people, but still, the beverage control. Now, they don't actually quote the full uh, section here, so I'm going to look a little bit further at this, because the first one does specify that it applies to citizens. I'd like to see if the other one applies to citizens as the well. The other one says any person, it right? It says whoever being required in the name of, any, of the state shall assist it's whoever that could be everybody all right we'll come back with more your thoughts are welcome 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733 i wonder if an officer asks you to help and then you screw it up do you get qualified immunity no on the way free talk live got a simple question for you can you sell yes Okay, can you sell the intangible? If yes, and you'd like to work 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, with no overtime, no weekends, if you're passionate about not closing sales, but about opening relationships, if you truly have a desire to serve global clients who need your advertising expertise, and you're local to the Twin Cities and Burnsville, are hardworking, self-driven, with experience in sales, marketing, or advertising, are personable and a whiz on the phone, GCN wants to talk with you right now. GCN. The Genesis Communications Network is one of the largest independent talk radio networks in the world, and we're hiring right now. We offer benefits and an excellent commission structure. Experience preferred, but we'll train the right person. Is that you? Submit your resume today to advertise at GCNlive.com. Again, that's advertise at GCNlive.com. Come work with the Genesis Communications Network, an equal opportunity employer. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. 
and they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hardworking men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power but there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value and they look neat too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy to use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don't tread on meme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Here you may take control of the airwaves and bring up anything you want. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Some places you might be obligated to help the police if they ask you. And if you don't, misdemeanor charges. At least that's how it is in Florida, apparently. You can share your thoughts. Also, the police have no obligation to help you. So if you're in trouble and they don't show up, too bad. Can't sue them. They can't be held responsible in any way, shape, or form. So we've got uh, other things to talk about here tonight. Of course, your call's welcome at 855-450-FREE or Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Still to come, the college sex agreement law that is currently working its way through the system in California. Daryl has that. It's very disturbing. First, we go to the phones and your calls and thoughts. Oh, want to also tell you about freedomsphoenix.com. Every day at freedomsphoenix.com, you uncover the secrets and expose the lies. That's what they are giving you over at freedomsphoenix.com. It's the real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship that we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Check out freedomsphoenix.com as we go to, I believe we've got Steve in Massachusetts. Steve, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Ellen, and Daryl. How you doing, guys? Great, Steve. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. Good, good. I, I live in a building here in Brockton, Massachusetts, and okay. uh, we, we got a drug dealer problem here, hmm. okay. and I've called the police. I uh, talked to the uh, landlord about the place, and uh, nobody seems to want to do anything about it. Well, now, what's the problem? I mean, a, a drug dealer by themselves isn't harming anyone. They're just doing business. Uh, well, you know... Uh, We've had a couple of uh, apartments uh, 
kicked in. Oh, so and, the uh, so the addicts are uh, causing problems then. The uh, they're stealing. As far and, as I know, yes. Yeah. So yeah. this drug dealer is actually drawing the attention of people who are potentially going to cause damage to your area. Uh, have you thought about right. like? I, I've been living here for twelve years, and the last uh, last four years it's gone downhill. And I've asked the uh, landlord for help, and he says it's not my problem; it's mm. your problem. He's How probably a customer. My problem? Uh, How is it my the problem? What about other forms nope. of defense that you could purchase, like just in stores, like uh, you know, camera security cameras, or like extra locks, or something like that, See, or maybe that, even a private protection agency? I've, I've talked. I've talked to the guy about it, and he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to let I you put a the- second lock on the door or anything like that. Oh, I have two locks on my door. Yeah. I'm a Desert Storm veteran. Okay. I, I got bayonets. I got to sleep on a knife next to my bed. Wow. Okay. That's not right. I've been here 12 years. Last four years, it's been out of control. Has it been the same manager the last 12 years, or is it a yes. new guy? Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. So things have really gone downhill. And you're saying the yeah. police won't even respond? No, the police. I, I, I know a, a, a woman on the police department, she tells me, uh, well, you got to make a decision. You either want to stay there and put up with it, or you got to leave. Mm. Why do I have to leave? Right. Why are they refusing to do anything about the situation? I have no idea. I have no idea. Well, you know, um, it, where I it's come ridiculous. from, the sh- one of the sheriffs is known as one of the biggest drug dealers in the area. And it's not <laughs> it, right. I mean, it's not uh, it's not unsurprising to find out that the sheriff has certain approved dealers that operate in town. And if you're not one of the approved right. dealers, you'll get arrested. But if you're an approved right. dealer, then you won't be touched. Right. So there's a chance that there's some level of corruption going on here where maybe the police are already well aware that there are drugs being sold out of that uh, that property. And because there's some sort of agreement that uh, they won't touch the guy. I was already asked to uh, take uh, down license plate numbers and stuff like that, different people. By whom? Who you asked know, you that? I stayed outside and did my thing, and I sent it to them, and nothing was ever done. Hmm. Nothing. Well, once again, I mean, it's it's more proof, right? Like, they what, have what no I, obligation. What am I supposed to do? You're screwed. Am, You're going to have to move. Yeah. yeah. I have to move? Pretty much. I'm on disability. I don't have the money to move. I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, if, if it's a, if it's a bad place to live, then you better find the money or somehow scrimp and save to where you can you can put it forward. Wow. I don't know what else to All tell right. you. Any other suggestions for Steve? So even I if- have no suggestions, but I I do want to point out that you know this is just one more example of the sort of thing that is inherent in the black market. Mm-hmm. Whereas if people could go down to you know a cornered store, go to CVS or Walgreens and purchase their cannabis openly, then these aren't right. likely cannabis buyers. We're probably talking about no, heroin no, no, addicts no. and meth heads. Cannabis. This is this is all crack and yeah. heroin. Yeah. Right. So I hope you're not putting yourself in any like personal danger here, but oh, what no, if no, what no. if you were to call the police like as something was happening, would they still refuse oh, they, to come yeah, if I, you're I like called, there's an emergency, called, someone's breaking in? I've called them before when a drug deal was going down. It took them a half hour to get here. The same thing's true, though, Daryl, about the hard drugs. If they were selling right. heroin at because, Walmart. But the, the reason I mentioned cannabis is because generally the people that sell the cannabis are selling other things as well. Sometimes. Steve, thanks for your call. Good luck out there. I appreciate hearing from you tonight. And a perfect example of how they have no obligation to you. They right. don't have any obligation to show. It's not like uh, Domino's or whatever, whatever the company was. Remember 30 minutes or it's free or whatever? Remember? Oh, that? yeah, and then they had to change that because several of their drivers got into vehicle accidents for driving oh, too God. fast to get there in really? less than 30 minutes. Was it Domino's? It was Domino's. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, because it, it was some of the more rural locations mm-hmm. to where, you know, They're their hauling. delivery zone, you know, might have yeah. been a little too large than, you know, what you could really deliver to <laughs> in 30 minutes. And, yeah, they actually had some instances of people getting into pretty serious vehicle accidents. Dave's so in Utah. They changed that. Listening to KZNU. Hello, Dave. Hi. You guys are pulling my chain tonight. Dave, did you call once earlier? Anyway, 
Yeah, I did. I'm sorry. We have a one call per night rule, but go ahead and give us a call tomorrow night. Would really appreciate that. We got to make sure we get room for other folks in here. And thank you for the call, Dave. Uh, the toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. I'm, you know, that's just one of. The, we don't have a whole lot of rules on Free Talk Live, but one of them is one call per night. Because otherwise, if we just let the same person call back, yeah, then it becomes the Dave Show, and right. that's not the same. Thing. Well, apparently we're pulling his chain tonight, so we're talking about something that's controversial enough to stir up someone's emotions good, good and i'm glad that you know dave is uh, is still listening and still interested and uh, i do appreciate the input though 855 450 free the toll-free number here what is happening in california daryl with a proposal to ban sexual intercourse unless there's an agreement in place prior to it or yeah. is it any sexual contact uh it's sort of Strange, because I actually read the text of the bill okay. earlier tonight, and I'm still confused about exactly what it is that requires either explicit verbal or written consent. Hmm. But there's an article here from Breitbart that says a newly amended bill from a California lawmaker would require college students to stop in the heat of passion and establish hmm. verbal or written consent before having sexual intercourse anywhere on a college campus within the state of California. The On a college campus. The bill gotcha. SB 967, which was amended last week by Senator Kevin De Leon from the Los Angeles area, would mandate that college students obtain, quote, an affirmative, unambiguous, and consensual conscious decision by each participant mm. to engage in mutually agreed upon sexual activity. See, I thought that if you're like in the heat of passion, you're already ex like not verbally, but you're still giving your consent unless otherwise stated. Like, well, Apparently no, you're actually, going to need to be verbally doing it now if you're on a college campus. Right. And I, right, I, But how are they going to prove this? Like, is, is there going to be question. some sort of like verbal contract where, you know, you have to have a witness or you have yeah, to sign know. a piece of paper? <laughs> So the article continues, and I do have the but text of the bill. But this is just a bill. proposal, right? Like, it it's, hasn't even passed anything at this it's point. It's a proposal for now, but, you know, I always the hesitate to bring those stories. that it opens up. Yeah. We can explore it a little bit further, yeah. but I, I always have a hesitation to bring stories like that to the table because a lot of them just die and they don't go anywhere. So there's well, all there's kinds of... Well, there's a good of reason they introduced it. Oh, all right. Well, we'll find that out here in a moment. Good tease. 855 450 free. Take control here at Free Talk Live. Oh, and you can join us on Skype at username lrn.fm. There's more coming up. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Gentlemen, in search of a million dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com it's already too late. Criminals have kicked in your door and are now in your home. Before this happens, homeowners have a choice. One, do nothing and hope you aren't one of the 1.4 million families attacked each year. Or two, refuse to be a victim and for as low as $59, reinforce your doors with door devils. Door devils simply attach to existing door frames and have proven to stop the biggest bad guys from kicking in doors. Read our police testimonials of real life events at doordevil.com. Alarms don't stop kick-ins. We do. Doordevil.com. I will never forget the day my son Jeremy told me he hated me and slammed the door in my face. I'm behavioral therapist Janet Lehman. Behavior problems can turn the child you love and your life into a nightmare. 
That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the step-by-step program that shows you how to fix the worst behavior problems and get your child to respect Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control here toll-free. Just dial to 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 3733. We've got a website. You can just go and visit us there and get interactive with other Free Talk Live listeners over at freetalklive.com. And Dodd Frank, Fannie Mae, and Freddie Mac are killing the mortgage industry. But the Mortgage Minute guy, Roger Schlesinger, has found some ways around these rules and organizations. Private loan sellers are competing directly against the U.S. government, and things look good. Stated income loans are back. These were truly less trouble than traditional mortgages. You state your income, truthfully, obviously, and they get you a loan. Rates are great, and it's never been easier to get a loan. If you need to refinance or get cash out, call the Mortgage Minute Guy at 1-866-288-0088 or go to MortgageMinuteGuy.com. 1-866-288-0088. one 888 As we continue here, a disturbing proposal in California has come out to require what sounds to me like a sex contract prior yes. to having sexual activity with another individual on a college campus. Yes. And I presume the reason for this is because there are some instance, uh, instances of rape Date rape and things like that, and or uh, you know, rape at it like a college party and things people like that. People that are too drunk to consent, and yeah. then the next morning they realized, oh, Whoops. I did something I didn't want to. So and, we uh, need legislation to solve this problem, right? Teenagers and uh, young people in their early twenties obviously can't uh, handle themselves, and they need to have mommy government step in here. Right, but I think there's a difference be- between like. Uh, getting drunk and sleeping with somebody and then waking up in the morning and realizing, oh, wow, I really shouldn't have done that. That was a huge mistake. And then, you know, actually like being passed out on the floor and somebody rapes you like that is not giving consent. Like, I think that implied consent is, you know, something to take into consideration here. I'm not quite sure how they would enforce the verbal consent unless it was like recorded or there's a witness. Yeah, I find that really strange. Like, oh, well, somebody just claims they've given verbal consent. Isn't that good enough to claim that you've had verbal consent? Right. But if you're like actively pursuing the relationship, I think that in itself is enough to be considered consent. 
Well, I think you kind of brushed aside rape, one kind of rape, Ellen, and maybe I misunderstood what you said there a moment ago. You said like being on the floor versus waking up with somebody you didn't want to wake up with. Um, I mean, we actually you talked about this on, I think it was a Saturday night show, Mark and I, a couple of weeks ago, the idea about how if you wake up and somebody is having sex with you and you were in bed with that person, presumably from the night before, but you don't remember going to bed with that person. Is that rape? Well, if you weren't pursuing the relationship, if you didn't like give your consent in some way, like Can through you action consent or through while word? in uh, in an inebriated state. Well, that's a good question. It's I don't think if, if you were given roofies, probably not. You've definitely got impaired judgment. Yeah. So I I don't really think that you can. How many drinks do you have to have before you can't consent anymore? Is it the legal limit, 0 0.08? Can you not decide after 0 0.08 legally whether or not to have sex with someone? See, I think even if you do make that decision, uh, even if it is a bad decision, it's still yours. And like a lack of judgment on your part. Or the yes. decision to go to bed with somebody. Yes, both. Okay. I, I it, It's one of those sort of, you know, like it's a line that once it's crossed, you know that it's crossed. Yeah. But... You know where that line is for each individual person is not going to be the same, because I used to work as hospital security, and there was somebody that came in with a blood alcohol of point four seven. Whoa! How Whoa. was that person? She alive? was standing up and talking. Amazing. <laughs> she must have been a really heavy drinker yeah. for a long she time. She was, and it took her about forty some odd hours to wind up having her blood alcohol level go down to a level at which she could actually be seen by a doctor in order to wow. get a you know actual You're too drunk. We evaluation. can't we can't evaluate you. <laughs> right. Well, because it's going to throw everything off. It's going to break the meter. <laughs> you know, it's going to throw it. all of the results off, but of course they were doing the thing of checking on blood pressure and mm -hmm. other think keeping up vitals but they couldn't actually do the examinations hmm. on her until the blood alcohol went below 0 0.08 but you know like a like i said at 0 0.47 she was standing up and talking so her level of totally how drunk different. she would have yeah. to be to not be able to give consent is going to be totally different right. Than mine or yours or Ellen's. So, what's the motivation behind this law? Have the article. The article says that the U.S. Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights last month released a list of 55 schools that are facing federal probes into their handling of sexual assault cases. The sponsor of the bill said that his bill is meant to confront sexual assault problems head on saying, obviously, there's a problem. SB 967 will change the equation so the system is not stacked against survivors by establishing an affirmative consent policy to make it clear that only yes means yes. There is language in the bill that says, consent must be ongoing throughout the encounter and can be revoked at any time. The existence of a dating relationship between the persons involved or the fact of past sexual relations between them should never by itself be assumed to be an indicator of consent. Right, which I agree with, but I don't think that you can strictly control this based on legislation. Like, there's there's a lot of cases out there in which women, uh, you know, consent to having sex with somebody and then afterwards claim it was rape mm -hmm. just because That's they scary. don't want to be humiliated or right. something. So. There's always uh, that catch, and I, I think that there needs to be a little bit more, you know, evidence and looking into the situation before they just say, like, oh, it was rape because she didn't specifically say yes. Well, right. So if, if, the, if the law is saying, the proposed law, yes, uh, if it's saying that uh, the consent must be there continuously throughout the, the encounter, then it really wouldn't do any good to get a signed agreement, would it? Because if at if you got a signed right, agreement, you can break a contract at any time. But if you if 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 we if the person the two people had a signed agreement and then later on one of them changes their mind, let's say they did go through with it after that and no one said no during the actual sex. Right. But then if later one of the participants says, "Ah, Ellen raped me," and uh, and says, "You know, I didn't consent. I told her no." In the <laughs> middle of that, 
And then at that point, does that invalidate the fact that they had a signed agreement prior to that? How about right. this? How about we give everyone little buttons and they have to hold it down for as long as they have consent? <laughs> if they let go of the button, they give up their consent and you have to stop immediately. Well, and then the the real issue that I take with this is the statement that you know there are certain things that should never be assumed as an indicator of consent. And they're meaning expressed consent. Not implied consent, because I know people and have dated people right. like this of whenever you want me, you can have me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can initiate whenever you want. Right. Then that's when... implied consent. That's not express consent before each encounter. Right. The difference there would be that uh, an implied consent would be that if you are feeling the person up, they don't stop you. That implicates that. It's okay to keep going. Right. right? As long as they right. don't refuse, that's that's implying that you, you're okay with what's but going on. But what they're saying is you need express consent, you need which express means, consent. whoa, 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 before you touch me, <laughs> it's okay. You can touch me now. <laughs> I yes. consent. I consent to you touching me. Yeah. And then, you know, what, what if, you know, let, let's say that you're in the middle of, you know, your thing and the woman says, stop for a second, you're on my hair. Yeah. Then do you have to stop the entire encounter and then well, get permission again before continuing? Mm. Because she did say stop. Right. Just for a second, though. Right. I mean, but after the that word second. stop was still there. Okay, let's just stop. You're on my hair. And don't right. say how long to stop. But then she do you outlined have to specific get, conditions, though. Right. But do you have to get permission, expressed permission again before continuing? Are you continuing? ready to continue? <laughs> Shall I? Are continue? you good to continue? Here, I need you to sign this form in duplicate. <laughs> you know, Ellen. You just, you just one need copy update. for me, one copy for you. Maybe, maybe the form could have multiple signature spaces on it, where like you can notate the time and what's happening at that right, moment. Right, have a stopwatch sitting next to you, like but, start time, stop time, start but, time, but stop you need time. Two forms. And then you need the carbon paper in between, <laughs> so that way both parties have a copy of That's the form. That's what this is. And this... we need a third-party arbitrator just to make sure that all of this is legitimate. Maybe it's, maybe you stumbled onto something there, Daryl. Maybe this is a plot to bring back carbon paper. <laughs> it could be. I mean, because the carbon paper manufacturers are likely hurting right now since you know the various different technologies that have superseded it. But if the government can mandate that everybody needs to have a sex form on carbon paper, that could be a big deal, especially if they make this apply to everybody. Because right now, this only applies to college campuses, people having sex For on now. college campuses. More likely, they'd right. be using public forums. To where is this going to expand? Uh, hour number three is on the way, because government doesn't stay small. They always keep getting bigger and more intrusive. 855 450 free. The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Friday, June 6, 2014. Radio VR News. President Obama is in Normandy this morning, joining Allied leaders and marking the 70th anniversary of the D-Day landings that turned the tide in World War II. White House correspondent Mark Smith reports. Surveying rows of white headstones at the U.S. military cemetery above Omaha Beach, the president recounted the heroism of those who stormed ashore here and said they ensured the survival of liberty at its moment of maximum peril. We come to tell the story of the men and women who did it so that it remains seared into the memory of a future world. But he says succeeding generations, too, like the one that's fought in Afghanistan, have also learned what it means to join the common struggle for freedom. Mark Smith with the president, Colville sur Mer, France. Key senators have reached an agreement on a proposal to deal with the current crisis in veteran care. Jerry Bodlander explains. The agreement that was hammered out over the past couple of days calls for the construction of more than two dozen facilities in 18 states, as well as the hiring of more doctors. And Senator John McCain says some veterans could get care outside the VA system. If they're outside of 40 miles from the nearest VA facility, if there's a wait time which is unacceptable, then they should be able to go to the health care provider right near their home. And like a bill that's passed the House, the measure makes it easier to fire senior executives for poor performance, but includes an appeal process. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. The new acting VA secretary has pledged to make changes to improve health care for veterans. Diane Kepley has an update. At the troubled VA Medical Center in Phoenix, acting Secretary Sloan Gibson said 18 veterans whose names were left off official wait lists have died. But it's not clear whether their deaths were linked to long wait times to see a doctor. We have let our veterans down. Gibson says Monday his office will release a detailed report on the nationwide scheduling audit. We will also be releasing uh, patient wait time data location by location. An inspector general's report last week found 1,700 Phoenix area veterans were at risk of being lost or forgotten after being kept off the official waiting list. I'm Diane Kepley. One young man is dead after another shooting on a school campus, this time at Seattle Pacific University, a small Christian university. Correspondent Jackie Quinn has the latest. Police say a lone gunman walked into a building and shot three people. When he tried to reload his gun, he was subdued by a building monitor, a student, and tackled. Other students jumped on top of them and they were able to uh, pin the shooter. The shooting comes just weeks after a rampage around a California campus in which six people were killed. This student called for gun control shaken by the events at her school. Just like scared. This was the last week of classes before commencement and Seattle Pacific University President Daniel Martin says. We are a community that relies on Jesus Christ for strength and we will need that at this point in time. I'm Jackie Quinn. Officials say threats to captured American soldier Bo Bergdahl's life by the Taliban added to the administration's urgency to finalize that controversial trade. Trey Bolander has the latest. There were concerns about Bergdahl's health, evidenced by Majority Leader Harry Reid's description of Bergdahl's behavior on the proof of life video that the Taliban provided. He just didn't talk with a lot of... Uh... Didn't, that didn't speak too clearly. But sources say the deal to trade Bergdahl for five Taliban officials was put on a fast track and Congress not told about it because the Taliban threatened to kill Bergdahl if the agreement leaked before it happened. Congressional officials say that threat prompted the administration to move quickly on the agreement. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. <laughs> The military says Sergeant Bo Bergdahl's health is getting better each day. National Security Correspondent Sagar Magani reports on the former POW's health. 
Bergdahl remains in stable condition at a U.S. military hospital in Germany. He is conversing with medical staff and becoming more engaged in his treatment plan. He's resting better and showing signs of improvement. Still, Colonel Steve Warren at the Pentagon says there's no date set for Bergdahl to be transferred to the U.S. And while Bergdahl is talking with medical staff, he still has not spoken with his parents. Sagar Magani, Washington. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Shortly after posting for the 10,000th time on his Twitter account earlier today, despite only ever accumulating 15 followers, local man Aaron Gartner announced he's about ready to quit the popular microblogging site. Well, I opened my account about two years ago and tweeted pretty much every day since, and it didn't really turn out like I expected. I thought, you know, once I hit 8,000 tweets, I could get some traction, start getting more followers, but it never really happened. I mean, I gave it my best shot, I guess. But I think I'm about done here. He has yet to be followed by anyone beyond a handful of friends, family members, and seemingly inactive accounts. This one time I tweeted out a pretty good joke about how out of control Lindsay Lohan is, and it actually got me a retweet. It was from this guy in Argentina, I don't know, uh, who doesn't have any followers, and he's not following anyone else. Oh, hold on a sec. Apparently my aunt's following me now. Cool. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want here toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So feel free to connect in the way that works best for you. With you tonight, Ian here. Ellen. And Daryl. So the war on chalk continues here in Keene, New Hampshire. It's been getting news media coverage uh, this week with local media. I don't think it's gone too far outside of New Hampshire at this point. I did a search for chalk and Keene on Google News last night. There was a short blurb in the Boston Globe, I think. But beyond that, uh, nothing outside of the area. But here in Keene, New Hampshire, this chalking thing is the talk. It seems like the talk of the town. Uh, people are calling talk radio about it on the local talk shows here in Keene. They had the police chief come in this morning, apparently, on the local talk show in Keene to discuss the issue of the chalking and the violence that has been associated. So chalking with is actually considered an issue, like it's oh, yes. causing problems for people that there's chalk on the sidewalk. Oh yes, in Keene, New Hampshire, chalk is the controversy at uh, at the moment. And it was actually interesting because I was out this morning. Oh, and by the way, before we get, we'll get back into the chalking, but I was actually out this morning at court to for two purposes. I was doing don't take a plea deal outreach, so giving people information when they come into court, suggesting that they not take a plea deal. And at the same time, about an hour later, I went up to go watch Rich Paul's arraignment today. He uh, is a friend of the show. We've had him on behind a microphone in here, and he actually was violation got a violation of probation charge earlier this week for a nonsense claim that he actually was in possession of a weapon. Um, he had a monopod for a camera that he was going to use to defend himself when two men were coming at him as though they were going to fight him. But apparently, if you're a convicted felon out on probation, you can't have a monopod and hold it as though it were a weapon. So he's in some trouble with the probation system right now. And I went to court this morning. The video is actually up on the Free Keen channel. I just haven't posted it to freekeen.com yet. I've been out all day. But uh, So if you want to go and check it out, just go to youtube.com and go to the Free Keen channel. You can see that there. You can watch his full arraignment where basically the state prosecutor argues that Rich Paul is a danger to society and should be kept off the streets. The judge ultimately agrees with the prosecutor even though – Again, Rich Paul was never convicted for any sort of violent crime. He did not actually get into a fight on the night in question. The people who were coming at him ultimately did not come full all the way and actually attack, attack Rich Paul. They attacked someone else, or one of them attacked someone else. But anyway, um, the point being, Rich Paul has been denied bail. Rich Paul is still currently in, in a jail cell. So for those of you that were looking for the latest on the Rich Paul case, uh, that's that. So, back to chalking. 
And you can follow, uh, you can find out the latest on Rich Paul over at freekeen.com. But back to the chalking issue, it's become quite the controversy here in Keene. And people are genuinely cur- curious. Some people are very, very uh, opinionated about it already. There are people who do not like chalking. They do not like the idea that activists are chalking. They'd probably be okay with small children chalking, but they don't like seeing adults chalking because adults will chalk things like uh, really slimy things like smiley faces and hearts and these evil propaganda about peace that has been put out there. And there's Free some people, private manning in the right, drug war. Some people that don't like that. So peace is the way is one of the ones I've written. Uh, in fact, Free Rich Paul, I wrote outside of the courthouse uh, this morning. And while I was writing this on the sidewalk, there's been a lot of construction going on in front of the courthouse. One of the ladies who is one of the kind of the traffic directing ladies uh, in the constru- with the construction crew, she comes up. She's not doing anything. There's no traffic in this particular uh, instance. So she walks over and she she asks me some questions about like just sort of generic questions, generic uninformed questions like what's what's all this about? And uh, and I meant well, what do you mean? Are you talking about the chalking? Are you talking about this flyer? Because again, I was hold- holding out these don't take a plea deal flyers, and she was like all of it. And so we had a conversation, and I gave her a copy of the Don't Take the Plea Deal flyer, and she kind of looked through it, and she had some questions about victimless crimes. Because in the Don't Take a Plea Deal flyer, it mentions that not taking a plea is a good way to clog the system up so that hopefully in the future they'll stop charging people with victimless crimes. And so she was asking, well, what are, what are these victimless crimes all about? And I kind of tra- kind of went through a few of them with her, like, well, you know, drug possession, there's no victim there, there's... Only the person that has drugs and you know, people should be free to do what they want with their own bodies. And well, what about speeding? She says, because speeding is listed on there. And I said, well, in most cases, speeding isn't a victimless crime. You probably speed. And she admitted, oh, yeah, I speed every day. <laughs> and, you know, so our conversation went on and uh, we ended up talking a little bit about the chalking as well. And when she walked away, she seemed very satisfied. She seemed uh, and she was earnestly interested in, in what was happening. And she wasn't the only person on that morning who inquired when we were actually standing outside after Rich Paul's hearing. One of the guys with a different guy with the construction crew who was on the other side of the street walked all the way over to us, probably a good 100, 150 feet walked over to and again, kind of asked this sort of generic inquisitive question uh, about the chalking like. Hey, what's all this chalking all about? And, you know, we were not really sure what, what he meant. Like, kind of gave him the opportunity to clarify his uh, his question. And somebody made a statement about how it's a peaceful a form of peaceful expression. And there were some more statements made sort of about why people chalk, why activists might choose to chalk or adults might choose to chalk. And there was some back and forth. And the guy seemed satisfied with the conversation. He turned around and he went back to work. And there was another guy who came out of uh, the courthouse earlier on when I was doing some of the outreach. And and as he was kind of walking away, I said, you know, goodbye to him because I'm out there actually greeting people as they're coming in. So he had seen me when he'd come in. And so I was saying goodbye. And he kind of stopped and he turned around and he came up to me and said, I just want to let you know, I really appreciate what you guys are doing with the Robin Hooding. And of course, Robin Hooding is different from talking. Uh, Robin Hooding is where you save people from getting parking tickets by putting coins in expired meters. And uh, and he just had nice things to say about uh, Robin Hooding, and he said that he actually worked for a town government at one time. He used to work in Bellows Falls, Vermont, for the the town there. And he says he says it's the same everywhere, meaning that you know like the good old boy network, the corruption, uh, and more importantly, as he pointed out, the the ignorance of people and the apathy of people. And I said, yep, sure is. And he said the the only difference is that you know people. The only difference here is that people seem to be willing to stand up. And so he said that he really appreciated what was going on. And not one person said anything nasty this morning. So it was a nice day. And chalking seems like one of those things that's fairly innocuous. Like, it's just a freedom of speech, basically. You're going out and uh, putting something on the sidewalk that, you know, it's totally temporary. It can be washed off with rain or water or anything. It's not harmful to anybody. And all you're doing is spreading, like, peaceful messages or putting, you know, even drawing pictures. Uh, I know there's a Facebook group now about like protecting protecting the hopscotch, and you know, I'm keen. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, I I don't see what the problem is with chalking. Like clearly, from these experiences you've had, most people don't see an issue with it. 
Well, I don't know if it's most people. I mean, obviously, if somebody is upset, they may not say something to you, right? Like, they may just walk by you rather than give you a piece of their mind. So it's hard to say what most people think. But the chalking, the people who do chalk and the people who Robin Hood, for instance, these are two of the more recent forms of activism in, in town. They get plenty of positive feedback. I mean, it'd be one thing if you were an activist and everyone you encountered told you how awful you were and how undesirable the activism was. But that doesn't happen in Keene. There's all kinds of people who appreciate a lot of the activism that goes on here, and they will tell you so in no uncertain terms that they appreciate it. So I thought that was really cool. It was a great morning. And even if you don't appreciate the activism that's going on, I don't think that if you walk past a drawing on the sidewalk, you're going to be offended by it. Especially if it's something... Some people are. You know, even if it's a nice picture. Like, I like to see sidewalk art. There's some really impressive things that go on. Like, uh, there's some sidewalk artists that uh, make these huge 3D drawings with chalk. Mm, Yeah, those are cool. What if that was going on in Keene? I mean, I would love that, first of all. But second of all, would that be considered graffiti? Would that well, you know, be looked down upon? One of the chalkers is Mariah, and she's a local who's very bu- very busy chalking, and she does beautiful artwork. I mean, she takes a lot of time. Like, I suck. I just go and make smiley faces and write phrases and things like that. Uh, but she actually does artwork. Like, she really does take time and make pretty pictures, and I don't know how else to describe it. They're, they're very nice. And people have destroyed that. It's they're, art. Right, it's talent. It's art. I mean, it's art when I do a, a smiley face. It's just not as good. And she's very talented. And people will erase that just like they'll erase my smiley faces, just like they'll erase children's chalkings, just like they'll erase hopscotch. It's sick. More on the War on Chalk coming up. Quantum vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty quantumvibe.com from big head press stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains start making a difference one cup at a time we've partnered with Kamano island coffee roasters to offer you a free pound of buzz box coffee it's organic so no harmful pesticides or toxins shade grown meaning less acidity and no heartburn try the best of the best for free just cover shipping 10 percent of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 micro loans via world vision go to coffee.freetalklive.com make Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. Bring up what you want here toll free at 855-450-FREE. Your uh, thoughts on the war on chalk are certainly welcome as the Keene City Council member is proposing a graffiti ordinance with teeth. As he describes it, they're going to they're try to put a stop to the peaceful chalking going on in downtown Keene, New Hampshire. And we can tell you more about that coming up here in a moment. Also want to let you know about passports for Bitcoin. There are a lot of reasons why someone like you might want a second passport or to even go so far as renounce your citizenship. Last year was an all-time record for people renouncing U.S. citizenship. And people do it all over the world. Whether it's governmental intrusion on privacy or protest against foreign policy, to protect your wealth, avoid pointless regulations, onerous taxation, or as a refuge, you may want to get a second passport or change your citizenship. Check out the St. Kitts program at pass, uh, PassportsForBitcoin.com. Obviously, they take Bitcoin, and it's another way that Bitcoins can offer you more freedom. PassportsForBitcoin.com. Let's go to Nathan. And we'll continue the war on chalk discussion in a moment. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Ellen, and Daryl. You know, I was thinking when you were talking about Rich Paul there that it sounds like not only are they saying they don't have an obligation to protect, but you also don't have the right to protect yourself. That's correct. Not if you're a felon on probation, apparently. Apparently not. Um, one thing I like to bring up in these conversations is the Bowers versus DeVito case, just because I think it's such an iconic quote. It's the one where... Uh, and this is actually by Posner. I don't know if you uh, are familiar with him. What, but what was the uh, purpose of this case? Uh, uh, Bowers v. DeVito. Yes. Oh well, the state of uh, this. The, I think they were the Department of Health or something in Illinois released a madman who was clearly insane and stabbed a woman, and uh, they were suing because they clearly knew that this person was insane and you know a danger a danger to himself and others and so forth, and mm -hmm. the estate of the woman was actually suing. Um, I like the quotation by Posner in the case, though, which was that there is no – this is a direct quote. There is no constitutional right to be protected by the state against being murdered by criminals or madmen. It's true. Right, and, that's uh, true. But isn't there supposed to be some sort of uh, legal allowance for self-defense? In some places. In other places, defending yourself with a weapon at the very least will get you in trouble. Well, at the very least, he does say on the previous line there's a constitutional right not to be murdered by a state officer. And then he's oh, really? Or, yeah, he cites the Fourteenth Amendment because well, that that's would, okay. Uh, they don't. It's not murder when they do it. Most murder statutes actually exempt, as I understand it, the police. So therefore, when a police officer commits uh, what you might call murder, they don't call it murder because it was done by a police officer. Right. If it's Is done it like in the course of duty. In most in most cases, yeah. every now and then. You will hear a case to where somebody does something and then years later they wind up getting charged with murder or manslaughter because of what happened. See, what but catches me about rare. this case, though, is that he didn't have a weapon. He had, what was it, a camera stand? That's... Oh, you're talking about Rich Paul? Yes. He had a, allegedly, he had a monopod, which is uh, kind of a one ver, one pod version of a tripod. See, but that's like claiming that you you could use anything as a weapon. It doesn't matter yes, what you you're could. holding. Like right. if you're holding, and that's why the that's why the agreement that people sign when they go into probation 
says you cannot have a simulated weapon, which would mean that this bottle by itself is not a weapon. The bottle I'm holding uh, in the studio here. But if I were to wield it as though it were a weapon, all of a sudden it becomes a simulated weapon. At least that's my understanding and of it. The New Hampshire statute, and I quoted this in a thread earlier where somebody had asked the question, and I quoted the statute. The statute says, and I don't have it in front of me, unfortunately, something to the effect of a weapon is anything if used or threatened to be used in a manner that could cause serious bodily damage. So if you take a stick, mm -hmm. you know, a stick in and of itself is not a weapon. But if you hold it in a way and threaten to use it in a way to, you know, seriously hurt someone, right. then that stick is a weapon. So, Nathan, what you're trying to say is that it's legally all right to allow yourself to be beaten? You're, like you're not uh, legally allowed to defend yourself? No, I was just saying I, I think it's it was ironic that you were talking about Rich Paul being put back for uh, wielding a monopod because, you know, you were talking earlier about how the uh, the state could deputize you, and at least in Florida, and legally require you to help them protect someone. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like not only can they do that, but um, – or not only do they not have an obligation to protect you, and not only could they call you to uh, – be obligated to protect someone but then you can't be uh you know you don't have the right to even protect yourself was the funny thing there um in certain uh, that, in certain cases right like rich paul doesn't have the right to protect himself with a weapon as a felon who's out on probation in some places you do have the right to protect yourself with a weapon some states are more uh, liberal on gun ordinances and other weapon ordinances than others so like new hampshire vermont alaska you know these are three places that are fairly free when it comes to gun freedom and weapon freedom in general so in a place like that if unless you're a felon uh you do have a fair wi fairly wide range of protection options if you're in new york city you pretty much screwed. I mean, you um, you you might as well just bend over and and do whatever. Are, are you even told. allowed to carry like pepper spray in New York City? I would not suggest that I knew the answer to that question. I, I don't well, believe you are. Um, Good question. One last thing about this uh, this idea, and this is I don't think this is often mentioned, but I think it's important too, is that there is a time when the federal government is obligated to protect you. And I'm sure Daryl and, and Ian probably if know if you're what in that their is. custody. You mean if you're in their custody. <laughs> It's, then they it's have, true. they've entered into a special relationship. That's the that's the wording here in this court decision. And then they have an obligation to protect you. Yes, and you, then you become their ward at that point. They are authorized to use force to keep you alive, which means if you decide I'm not eating anymore, then they are authorized to under force feed magical you. powers granted to them to shove tubes up your nose, Ugh, down your God. throat, and into your stomach that so that they can awful. pour an inshore or an infamil drink into it mm -hmm. to make sure that you get nutrients because we can't allow you to die in our custody. Yep. It's true. So they basically force people to stay alive even if they don't want to. Correct. Yes. That's why they have suicide watch cells in jails because if they determine when you are put into a jail, what they're doing with Rich Paul uh, within the last 20, 40, uh, 48 hours was classification. And by the way, he is now available for visits. Uh, there are ways for you to visit Rich online. There's actually online visiting through the Securus system. Uh, I think securistech.net is their website if you want to look into that. You can actually visit Rich from around the world, which is pretty cool. Right. Um, but what they've been doing is classifying Rich. And so one of the things they do when they classify you is they put you in a cell by yourself. And they observe you. And they talk to you uh, prior to that. You know, you have to sit down and answer questions. Are you suicidal? And if you are, uh, if they determine you're not suicidal and you're not a danger to others, then they'll put you out in population with the rest of the prisoners. If they determine you are suicidal, you will be uh, relegated to the suicide watch cell, which in Cheshire County, New Hampshire, is basically a lo just standard size cell. You get to yourself and you have to be in there in a suicide vest. And so uh, you're you're allowed to die by not being able to defend yourself, but if it's like an approved, you know, if if you're in their custody, you're not allowed to. Right. Uh, more coming up here in moments. You can take control. The war on chalk heats up, and we'll give you the latest. 855-450-3733. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. 
If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pillow, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Toll free here at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we share with you. All free. freetalklive.com. If you care about your online privacy, you need to take steps to protect it. And ProXPN should be one of those steps. It's a global virtual private network. It encrypts your online data, meaning that your internet service provider will no longer have any clue 
what it is you're doing online once you start using ProXPN. And you can start using it right now for free by going to ProXPN.com slash FTL. Download their software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. Get it set up. If you're a Linux user, email their support staff. They'll give you some instructions. It's pretty simple with Linux, just a little different. You get started with ProXPN and protect yourself from prying uh, administrators out there, that, uh, whether it's your internet service provider or maybe the coffee shop administrator that wants to sniff out your packets or uh, somebody with a, a packet sniffer, a Wi-Fi packet sniffer, just sitting there in the coffee shop trying to monitor what you're doing, maybe snag your credit card info or get your bank account information. All of these things are possible unless you encrypt yourself. So ProXPN can help you with that, proxpn.com slash FTL. Go and get set up and get started and upgrade to the premium package when you're ready. You'll get unlimited bandwidth, which is a big, big difference, makes a big difference. Uh, servers all around the world that you can connect to, as well as the ability to privately torrent with their premium account. You'll save 20% by using code FTL20. And if you buy the annual package, that breaks the price down to 5 bucks per month. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online surfing habits. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL20 to get that discount for the lifetime of your account. We've been talking about the war on chalk, as it is being called here. It's been making news headlines across the state now with uh, the union leader picking up the story. Uh, the, Of course, Keen Sentinel's been reporting on it. The original claim is that, well, it's it's kind of a long story, I guess. It all started back with a DEA raid that happened several weeks ago where some local folks chalked some upsetting messages, some vulgar messages, out in front of the uh, head shop that was being raided by the DEA because people were upset that the DEA was raiding this peaceful business. And, you know, somebody put down F the DEA, and that upset some people in town who, you know, are let's say, less than friendly in general, but don't like profanity. And so they came down and cleaned it up, which resulted in more chalking being done, which resulted in another cleanup, which ultimately moved to Central Square. More chalkings, more cleanups, more chalkings, more cleanups. It comes down to now this week where violence occurs and uh, some of the local chalkers who are not free keen activists were involved in the, the uh, they were res the recipients of the violence. And uh, and one man was hospitalized as a result of this. He is now out of the hospital. He signed himself out early. He was supposed to get surgery. He refused to get that surgery and, and basically signed a consent form to get himself out. And he is in bad shape at the moment. Now, so. Ian, when you said, you know, and I'm glad you mentioned the, you know, Build up of chalking led to washing, led to chalking, led to more washing, led to more chalking. Yes. And there were people, and I heard conversations of there's people down there with water in Central Square. Let's go get the chalk. And so people would go down while someone was cleaning the sidewalk mm -hmm. and chalk in front of them. And to me, that just seems very childish. Hmm. It does um, seem a little antagonistic. I, I'm, I'm going to, you know, draw on the chalk right in front of you where you're pouring the water, yeah. so that I can say you just poured that on what I drew. <laughs> and I, I think that you know, from both sides, and I'm not putting all the blame on the people with the chalk or all the blame on the people with the water. I think that both sides have been immature in a lot of ways in this. You know, build up of the war of chalk. Twenty. I would call it a war on chalk. I don't feel like the chalkers are at war. I think the chalkers are are chalking messages of peace, messages of love, and to me, that's not that's not going to war. I understand where you're coming from, Daryl. That you feel like it, it seems antagonistic. Well, they are just exp using like freedom of expression. That's a First Amendment right. Well, yeah, but I wouldn't call it antagonistic to create in uh, the path of a destroyer, right? Because that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the creation of art in the case of these chalks, chalk arts. I mean, they were doing it purposely just to show that, like, you can't stop us. We're going to do this no matter what. Yeah, that is, I think, probably the motivation as to why they did it. But whether that's antagonistic or not, I think, is in the mind of the participant. Um, to, you know, I see myself, and, and by the way, I haven't participated in what you're talking about, Daryl. I've not chalked directly in front of a person removing the chalk. But I don't see anything wrong with it. Um, you know, they want to create designs. They want to create artwork. These other people want to destroy the artwork. And I think it makes a real strong statement to say that even in the face of your destruction, even there, right in the midst of your destructive acts, that we are going to continue creating beautiful artwork and sharing it with as many people as we can, which 
is just one, I guess, because the destroyer will be the only one who sees right. it before uh, it is destroyed again. But I, I support the Chalkers. I think they're doing the right thing. Right, and that's really empowering. But what I would like to know is uh, what exactly is the idea that these people have when they're washing off the chalk, and why did it lead to the violence against this this one man who was hospitalized? I mean, honestly, it doesn't seem like it's that provocative of an issue. Like, we're drawing on sidewalks here. It's not like you're going down and, like, uh, like spray painting on someone's house. Like, that would be different. I could see why people get upset about that. Totally. But somebody was so vandalism. angry that they actually attacked another somebody who was involved in this chalking. Now, the person who did the attack uh, on Tuesday, the, where the man was hospitalized, the victim was hospitalized, and suffered from all kinds of terrible breakages. I thought it was Wednesday. I believe it was Tuesday because the first attack happened Monday night and then the second attack happened the next day. So um, anyway, the person who attacked that man was not actually a member of Stop Free Keen, uh, which is sort of the known activist opposition group here in town. However, one of the attackers on Monday night who was threatening people absolutely is a, a member of Stop Free Keen. So it's you know, as far as why people are so upset about chalking, Ellen, I think that it's just a it's an expression of a larger frustration that these people have. They feel like they've they're living in this place, Keene, New Hampshire. It's this idyllic, picture perfect kind of New England town. And people have this view, uh, this view of what the town should be like and that it should continue in this sort of idyllic manner where. People don't use drugs in Keene. They don't drink to excess in Keene. People right. don't get in fights in Keene. They don't uh, do things that are controversial. And I agree with you that it is a manifestation of a larger problem in the background. Like, obviously, there's a lot of tension going on. But just the fact that something so minor could build up and manifest enough pressure to where it breaks out in violence. Like, I think that, you know, there is serious issues going on here. And if we focus on the prevention of violence, you know, it, avoiding the circumstances under which it occurs, then, you know, maybe that would be a better solution. I, I, I just don't understand the, why... I don't think it, you can avoid it. I don't think that... Uh, the, I don't think the circumstances that you're talking about can be avoided unless the liberty activists decide to do nothing. If, if the liberty activists had never raised their heads above the water, if they'd never, uh, you know, kind of rocked the apple cart, so to speak, if they just come to town and quietly voted, then, yeah, there would be no conflict there would be no concern that no, there would, would still be conflict but this this no. larger issue in the background is that people have false ideas of what is right and what is wrong and i think if you just have conversations with people and try to explain to them i agree but then they don't want to talk maybe they'll be more understanding many of the uh, members of stop free keen are not interested in having a conversation they don't actually have any ideas of their own they just want to destroy the ideas they don't like Right, but how can they not like them unless they do have ideas of their own? Well, maybe they do, but they won't share them with you. Well, I mean, that's adversity. Like, whatever you're for, I'm against. That's basically it. Yes. That's what it's come down to at this point. They're, it, they're against all chalking, even if it's not by a liberty activist. Even if it's by children, they'll clean it all up. They don't care. If Ian wrote a letter to the editor, and it was published in the local newspaper, and Ian said, the sky is blue, and the grass is green... End of letter, nothing else added. There would be people writing letters to the editor talking about how the sky isn't blue and the grass isn't green. Toll free number is 850. Well, I use just a cult leader trying to get you to think those things. 855, that's what someone might say. 855, 450 free. If you've got comments on the war on chalk or whatever's on your mind, you may take control in the remaining moments of Free Talk Live coming up next. The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. 
This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Free Talk Live. Dear FTL, we've got Chemtrail down here in West Virginia. Be nice. You've never seen them? <laughs> Contrail disappear relatively quickly compared to the chemtrail. If anybody that's listening that wants to fight the chemtrails, there's things called what you cloud gonna, how are you gonna fight them? Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Big cloud fans? Busters? Or wad busters? <laughs> I gotta give UFO hoaxers more credit. At least they go out and build a little saucer and they tie no, it to a cardboard string. saucer. And they, the yeah, I'd love to see a semi-legitimate website reporting anything on this particular uh, issue. I don't. I, I, just I don't haven't think. Seen it. I don't think you're gonna get that. Semi. I just asked. Semi-legitimate. You want a doctor to say it? There's a bunch of ones. Oh, there's the doctors. doctors. Just because you're a doctor doesn't mean you're an expert I, or smart, or it doesn't even mean you're a doctor. <laughs> okay. Go, okay. Go on my website later on tonight, and I'll be Doctor Manwich. Okay. <laughs> Free talk live seven nights a week. For from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the Realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Moments remain here, but enough time for your call and thoughts. You just dial in toll free here at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733 to get the latest on the war on chalk. Uh, head over to freekeen.com. That is what we've been focusing on here this hour, as literally chalking is the number one issue in Keene, New Hampshire, at least so it seems at the moment. People are talking about it uh, in the streets, it's being discussed in the media, and it's liberty activists who've led the way here and have stirred all of this up. It's, I think, another example that in a small place like Keene, New Hampshire, or anywhere in New Hampshire, because pretty much everywhere in New Hampshire is a small place. But what's funny uh, is people think that Keene is just this thriving metropolis. Do they? People from New Hampshire... They're like, oh really? yeah, Keen. That that's a you know pretty big, 
city. I mean, you know, on the scale of New Hampshire, 25,000 is big compared yes. to the towns, most of the towns in New Where Hampshire. Where I'm from, 25,000 is <laughs> the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what Keene is. But we've managed, you know, it's it's a real, I think, interesting example of how it is that a small group of dedicated activists can really make an impact here in New Hampshire. Now, some would argue that we're making a negative impact and we're ruining relationships with people in the, the city. But I'm sorry. Look, if you're going to do activism and you're going to be noticed, anything that you do, if you have an impact, you're going to destroy relationships with people because people will get upset. People will be angry that you're trying to change things, whether you do it through civil disobedience, through chalking, through you know creating media, or through going through the system and running for political office. Somebody somewhere is going to be livid at you for doing it because they like things the way they are and or they want things to be the way they want them, which, of course, is anti-freedom related, not pro-freedom. Let's go to the phones here. We've got David in San Francisco. So I think it's a testament to the Free State Project and how successful we've been so far with only a fraction of our total movers. So go check out freestateproject.org and learn more about it. David, you're on the air on Free Talk Live. Hey, greetings. Hey, um, a couple of different things. We've had uh, similar problems out here. Um, a, there were a couple of nuns that actually got arrested uh, on Hiroshima Day in front of the nuclear weapons lab at Livermore. Uh, they would lay on the ground, and then someone would chalk their outlines uh, as if a dead body. And uh, if I remember right, they got like four years in federal prison. For oh, my doing goodness. That. Yeah, it was crazy. This was maybe almost 20 years ago. Uh, you've, if you ever heard of the Berrigan brothers, um, you know, the, um, I'm trying to think, it was Catholic workers. Uh, they they are kind of famous for going on military bases and either pouring blood on, on uh, missiles or, uh, or hitting the missiles with a hammer, uh, beating the swords into plowshares. And, um, that sounds dangerous. But, yeah, that so doesn't I, sound safe at all. <laughs> well, uh, they they generally know what they're doing, and as a matter of fact, uh, it I think there was like an 87 year old nun that was able to walk on one of the most high security uh, nuclear facilities uh, uh, about two or three years ago, and hmm. she got past millions of dollars worth of security uh, uh, setups and simply walked onto this base and. She, I, if I remember right, she had to actually knock on a door in order to get arrested. Uh, it so was how did she amazing. get past the security? Did they just notice the nun walking in? and they No, figured... no, it's just that lax. Yeah, that's that's the amazing thing. Wow. You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, when you look at, at uh, for example, if the NSA is spying on everything, and then we've got these hackers that are getting everything from Target or hackers that are getting everything from uh, the university's uh, systems, uh, you know, all of the students' information. And every once in a while, you know, somebody will steal three million uh, people's Social Security uh, uh, and data. Uh, how is it that the NSA can be loaded with, you know, this responsibility of spying on everything, but they never catch these hackers that are – are stealing everybody's ID. That's because so that's not some... you know that's not what their uh, goal is. Their goal is to just do spying on uh, you know international countries and wholesale data collection, not necessarily to to stop hackers. I thank you. Good call though, David. Appreciate the story about the nun. Eighty four year old nun sentenced to thirty five months in prison. Whoa! She just got the sentence in February of this year. And this happened when? This happened, I believe it was two years ago. It was July 28th so of 2012. She's going to prison for three years because she... Federal prison. Because she walked onto a military base? Uh, essentially, but I believe there was also some form of quote-unquote vandalism that took place. What? So, so the vandalism was the chalking? I don't know. I no, don't no, understand no. what happened here. Did she just walk in and like the guy who was supposed to be watching the security cameras was asleep? So uh, she was able to get through somehow? Her and two others defaced a uranium processing building with human blood. Oh, wow. Hardcore. Ugh. Where did they get the blood from? I don't know. Probably a hospital or something like that. They've got to be there's got to be a service, some way that you can. Maybe uh -huh. they work for the blood mobile or something like Hopefully that. Hopefully it wasn't their own. Yeah. 
North American <laughs> Bitcoin Conference. It's coming up July 19th and 20th, Chicago's McCormick Place South Building. You're going to want to be there if you're in the Midwest or you want to take a plane ride. It might be worth it because there's all kinds of great speakers going to be there. And who knows how many people, according to Mark, the last North American Bitcoin Conference attracted far more people than were expected to show up. The Miami one, I believe, was expecting 500. They got 2,500. So this could be a huge event. And uh, so apparently the first time the Midwest, Chicago, has had any kind of Bitcoin conference ever. So that means there's likely a lot of pent-up interest and demand, and people want to know about Bitcoin. If you've been wanting to learn more, or if you're already in the Bitcoin universe and you want to meet some of the doers and the movers and the shakers, this is the place to be. You get to meet all kinds of cool people like Roger Veer, the Bitcoin Jesus, Tony Gallippi from BitPay, Charlie Lee of Litecoin, and many more. Go to btcchicago.com. Vitalik Buterin is going to be there from Ethereum, Jeffrey Tucker from Liberty.me. Go and get the details, get signed up, and we'll see you there because Free Talk Live is broadcasting live both nights, July 19th and 20th, btcchicago.com, as we go to Brian in Nashua, New Hampshire. Brian, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. I like the reference to pent-up demand, nice Keynesian reference that you put in there. Uh, But I I wanted to uh, continue on the sidewalk truck issue here. Please. Um, okay, you guys are familiar with uh, Amy Larson and she, uh, on the anniversary of 9 11 in 2012. She was, uh, she chalked, you can just Google Amy Larson arrested. And what you'll get is a story from the Napa Valley Register that just shows she wrote something that just says YouTube World Trainer WTC7 on the anniversary of 9 11. So an, an officer pulled up while she was writing this. And after a conversation, she was charged with felony vandalism. Felony? Felony vandalism. And that's and that was shocking to me because there's an interview with her on Alex Jones, I believe, in the weeks following. What happened but, with, the, with the case? Uh, from uh, that's the thing, they never really followed up. They mm. know that there's that all that they know is the charges went forward. The prosecutor went forward with the charges in the last interview. I was always, I was curious if anybody knew anything about her because she would basically be be a big face about someone that was acting completely peacefully and just in some wow. political message. And that is just pure political message. It was one statement by itself on the sidewalk no no confrontation someone asked her what she was writing she said what she was doing arrested felony and this was in california yes it is and where was it on a college campus or anywhere and what, what it was, was it? all it's uh, something called the napa valley register so, so somewhere the, in california is that isn't that a newspaper yes it is so that's the newspaper i'm citing it from Wow, shocking story, Brian. Anything it's else pretty, you want to yeah. share? Anything else you want to share tonight? Uh, well, I mean, they they kind of have this chilling effect. That, like you know, the oldest form of free speech is handling out brochures on a sidewalk, right? Sure. I mean, like, so how are you exactly? You're not. There's always like a a huge like social faux pas today about actually bringing up political topics. Period. But that mm-hmm. kind of is like the foundation of how you dumb down society by making anything that, you know, takes intellectual integrity to talk about and be like, because I don't agree with people that think that you should go to war. I think that's foundationally like a very intellectually honest thing, the dishonest thing to tell yourself. So if you can't like understand that and you don't have the intellectual integrity to challenge your existing beliefs on any political issue, then you have nothing to talk about with these people. So it's pretty sad. That's all. Thanks, Brian, for your call and the thoughts here tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And don't forget to check out Daryl's website. He is the host of Peace, Love, Liberty Radio, available to you live on Sundays on LRN.FM, but also, of course, in archival format, which you can download at radio. Oh, wait, no, fppradio.com. Dot com. Um, does radio.fpp.cc still forward you to the right place? Yes. You used to have that one. Okay, cool. So fpp.cc is your website, Daryl, where you can get more of Daryl in written form. A lot of that. There's uh, opinion pieces that you will write. News yeah. kind of pieces as well. News, news you, opinion. You also do some audio work like with Peace, Love, Liberty Radio, but also with a seven-day-a-week newscast, FP, the FPP News, available via podcast. Yes. At uh, Go and check it out, fpp.cc, for more of Daryl and more of Ellen at alpshow.com. We will return tomorrow night. Online in the meantime, freetalklive.com. The warning signs. First, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. 
I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society, the wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, June 6, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.04 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,252 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $658. Antiwar.com reports Boko Haram fighters dressed in Nigerian military garb attacked several villages in northeastern Nigeria's Gwoza district in the Borno state, killing hundreds of civilians and forcing the survivors to flee into neighboring Cameroon. Gwoza parliament member Peter Bai termed the toll massive and certainly in the hundreds of dead, but said that Boko Haram remains in control of some of the villages so they can't even get in to do a proper count. Survivors estimated the toll between four and 500 people. The attacks began Tuesday, but the Nigerian government did not appear to have even learned about it until late Wednesday when the first survivors